Foreign Policy Association of Pittsburgh presents Focus on World Affairs. It's televised press interview with prominent figures in world affairs. Today, the guest is Princess Ileana of Romania. Let us turn to TFX Higgins, FPA's executive director, for a background statement for this interview. This is East Europe, and for East Europe, the 1940s were a time of tragedy. In the early 40s, World War II. In 1944, armistice. In 1945 and 6, the communists took over. To learn more about the tragic events in this area and a look at the future, let us turn to today's moderator, FPA's director, Ronald Wolken, and his guests. Mr. Wolken. Good afternoon. Glad you could be with us. Today we welcome Her Royal Highness Princess Ileana of Romania. Welcome to our city, Princess. She was in Pittsburgh the first time 34 years ago with her mother, the famed Queen Maria, on a very famous royal visit. And she's been here four other times on lecture tours. Uh, she's, here to, she's here this week in Pittsburgh for the annual meeting of the YWCA of Pittsburgh. During her years in Romania, she was noted as perhaps being one of the most democratic members of royalty. She was the founder of the first school of social workers in Romania and also headed the Romanian YWCA and the Girl Scouts. She's the daughter of the famed Queen Marie, as I've mentioned, and great-granddaughter of Queen Victoria of England. She was forced to flee her homeland on 10 day, on, pardon me, 24 day, 24 hours notice by the communists that took over the nation. Uh, today she lives in, pardon me, what's name? Newton. <laughs> Newton, I see, near Boston, and she uh, lives there with her six children and husband, Dr. Stephen Isaresco, a pathologist doing research and pioneering in atomic medicine. Uh, to face Princess Ileana, we have today the panel of newsmen. We have Dick Larkin, Pittsburgh editor of Business Week magazine, Jane Allen Ball, WAMP radio personality, and TFX Higgins, executive director of the Foreign Policy Association. The first speaker and first uh, questioner today is Mr. Larkin. Ma'am, I've been consumed for days with curiosity about one little bit of history. When you were here with your mother in 1927, I believe, uh, do you recall the incident which has gone down in the records of the news business around here about the photographer who uh, was out of position and insisted upon uh, getting a picture of your mother and finally got her attention by hollering, hey, Queenie? I think I've heard it often enough, but not sure that I actually remember it because I think there were several such incidents which have gone down into history. Well, this is one that's gone uh, into history around here, and while I can't recall the name of the photographer who took it, he uh, is spoken of by the veterans here as one of the real ones. How long have you been away from your homeland? I lived in 48. 48, in other words? 48. You were there three years uh, after the... Uh, well, more than three years, almost four years of communist occupation. Uh, why did they up and uh, give you 24 hours, do you suppose? Well, I think that they found that the moment had come where they could uh, take over and where the king was decidedly an embarrassment to them. Had they not uh, formally completely taken over before your departure? No. No, not until they forced the king to abdication on uh, December 30th, 1947. And uh, then they really could go ahead to do as much as they wanted to. How long did it take them after they forced the abdication to, in effect, force yours? Uh, ten days later. We, le we left on the 12th of January, 48. Well, that uh, seems to me to give you some pretty substantial credit. Uh, cre credentials as an anti-communist, as an effective anti-communist, doesn't it? Well, I am now declared an enemy of the state. Uh, at least they did on? that immediately, of course, and condemned and all the rest of it, which they like to do so Is much. there a price on your head? Yeah. Nice, isn't it? Well, uh, very, very and then they ignored me. And now they are having a great time in attacking me again. For some reason, since I've been lecturing in England, uh, they have got much angrier. And they say all sorts of very rude things about me. Some of them are funny, some of them are less funny. The funny ones are that they say that I've grown old, fat, wrinkled, um, haughty, uh, objectionable. I'm also a mummy. 
and such like. You know. Mummy or mommy? Mummy. 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 Well, that doesn't go with being fat, does it, to my mind? But anyway, it seems... It's, I mean... Well, I... Of course, otherwise, other things do hurt, you know. I mean, when they say we think of you at all, we think of you with hate and so on. But evidently it is because uh, the people don't think of me with hate. And I don't think they take the trouble yeah. to say so. <laughs> well, in your book, Princess, you mentioned uh, the book uh, I Live Again, that it wasn't so much against you and your, and your class as it was the subjugation of the people themselves and their own individual thinking. That, and you objected to that so seriously. Well, that's the whole thing. It's uh, what I think that uh, Westerners on the whole are... Uh, misinformed about, they always think it's a class war. Well, it isn't actually a class war. It's a, cl it's a war against a certain way of thinking. And it doesn't matter what class you belong to. If you think differently to how the communists want you to think, why you are beyond the pale. So it doesn't matter if you are a peasant or if you're a factory workman or if you're a princess or whatever you are. It's all everybody is included. How the widely have they imposed that on uh, your people? Well, they've imploded uh, totally, I should say, but that doesn't mean, of course, that they are convinced. Because, you know, when the communists took over in Romania, there actually were only 750 members of the Communist Party out of a population of 18 millions. How were well, they able to take over? <coughs> well, simply by the Russian army coming in. Would you say that the average person in Romania felt that the royal family was identified with his hopes? Yes, I should say so entirely. Uh, they felt very much that way. They, to the very end, they still felt that we represented for them the possibility of freedom and equality and justice. Speaking about three years ago in the city of Pittsburgh, former ambassador to Russia of the United States, George Kennan, said, there is a finality for better or for worse about the events in East Europe. Do you agree with this? No, I don't, because I don't think there's a finality in history. What, what alternative is there to a continuation of the present circumstance? Well, I think that that's a world question, and it's a problem which is as much yours as it is ours. In fact, I think it is more yours than it is ours, because we are already a conquered people. We are a slave people. You are free. Therefore, the decision is yours, not ours. Well, this gets me to something I've been wanting to ask you about, which is this. Uh, suppose there were a uh, rebellion in Romania, such as there was in Hungary. What uh, would the Romanian people expect us to do, particularly the Romanians who are anti-communist and want freedom badly? Well, I should say that the whole country is anti-communist, except for a few sacrifices, you know. Uh, I should think they'd expect you to do what the Hungarians expected you to do, come in and help them. But I'm afraid that we've got to face the fact that they know you won't. Uh, how, all right, how much has, has it cost us? How much has it cost the spirit of freedom in Romania? That I they... should say a great deal. Would you think that the chances of such a revolt in Hungary are a great deal less, I mean, excuse me, in Romania, are a great deal less because of our failure to lend uh, material help? I should think it has had that effect on all the countries behind the Iron Curtain, not Romania alone. See, Romania is in a particularly difficult situation <coughs> because she is, has no frontier at all with any free country. So her situation is entirely cut off, for one thing. Then she's a Latin country amongst a lot of Slavs. Then there is no communist party, so you couldn't have a Titoism, for instance, in Romania because there's no party behind it. Uh, as as things stand now, as the balance, uh, political balance stands now, uh, for as far ahead as there's any point of looking, do you think there's any chance of such a rebellion in Romania? No, I don't think there is because they realize that it wouldn't be worthwhile. I think they know that passive resistance in the end is what is going to break communism. No, that what, what is it? that Passive resistance. A passive, strong, Christian life is what is going to end it in the long run. That's what I was going to ask you, Princess. You were very uh, active in the YWCA in, in Romania and uh, helped to organize the girl reserves there when you were a, a, a little girl in Romania. 
Uh, are they still active? Have the communists permitted the YWCA to continue their activities? No activities are permitted outside the communist organization. So, of course, anything as international as a YWCA is, I mean, anathema. And it had already been uh, done away with before I left. All organizations, everything, Girl Scouts, any, any kind of organization for the young, it is only the communist organizations which are allowed to exist. And of course, you may only belong to them if you play the game. Is there much contact between you and the other members of your family? Uh, well, we are all out. Uh, None so of them live in, in Romania no, any longer? No, except for my husband's family. And of course, with them, we only hear in a very roundabout way. I think our listeners would like to know whether or not you blessed your new house in Newport when you came, as you had blessed your castle in Romania. Oh, indeed. I wouldn't live in a house which isn't blessed. <laughs> <laughs> That's so significant of you. Is there any feeling among your family of a potentiality for return? Well, I don't think that we think of it in that way. Of course, everyone hopes to go home, don't they? That is a natural thing. But as I said before, it is such a world problem. It isn't a Romanian problem. It's a whole problem which faces the entire world to get rid of communism first, for them to be free. When Romania is free, that is the first question. For Romania to have her own say, and then it will be for them to say if they want us back or not. They may not want us back. But yes. our interest is for Romania to be free. And what we feel today is that we represent what Romania was when she was free. And when she was free, she chose to be a kingdom. And she may not choose so when she's free again. And Princess, you still think of yourselves living in exile then. And you still have a little pot of earth that is Romanian earth with you. Well, yes, I have some which is always in my house with me. And there is a particle of it deposited in St. John's Cathedral mm. in New York uh, under a beautiful icon which my mother gave and which I gave in memory of my parents and all those who had served Romania and freed them. And under this icon is this little urn of Romanian soil, which is a piece of free Romanian soil in America and which I hope will remain here as always a sign of freedom, even when Romania has regained her freedom as a sign of thanks for what America has done for us. How are your contacts with people still in Romania? Do well, such contacts only, exist? Yes, but only, of course, in a very roundabout way. Uh, no direct letter or anything like that. But I do get news, Would and it's very sad. Do you get uh, messages to them? For example, Voice of America. Well, evidently, yes, because I don't think that uh, they would have been attacking me so violently in their chief papers and making editorials of it unless my voice had crossed. Why should they? What do you think of the Voice of America? You occupy a peculiar position here. You are... Uh, a Romanian, and yet, in a sense, you're an American. Uh, uh, what about this voice of America? Well, I think that it isn't doing as much as it could, because I don't think that they have a firm policy, if I may say so. They, it's once like this and once like that, and I don't think that always those who look after it are really people who know enough of the background of the people they're talking to. Well, let me be the devil's advocate for a minute. As it's operated now, is it worth what we're spending on it? It's difficult for me to give an honest answer to that. Sometimes I feel that it isn't. That it's not? No, because I don't think that enough meaty um, program is given over to them. They want something solid, you know. Just vague promises and telling them that it's so much better here doesn't do much good, you know, because they know that. Well, now, what are your relations, for example, with uh, the Voice of America? Uh, do you volunteer, or do they? is it a question of uh, don't call us, we'll call you? Well, it's a sort of don't call us, we'll call you, and they don't, because their policy, they're not sure that if they had somebody like me, they mightn't be compromising on the uh, point of view of uh, royalty or something like that, you know, and as they don't want to be on the side of, uh, definitely, let's say, on the side of a kingdom. Wouldn't but, their children and, be interested in going on? But you see, yes. They might be. And, of course, my eldest son, especially, who is an engineer in, in the General Motors, see, if they had somebody like that speak, they did have him once. Mm -hmm. 
not as my son, but as what he is. And when well, there was a big Motorama thing on, which he had a lot to do with. Well, well in, in if, your, if in your Voice of America is not effective as a, a symbol of hope for these people, what are the symbols of hope? Well, you see, they prefer the BBC. The BBC is much freer in what they say. For instance, if they have me on the BBC, I can say what I choose. Do we censor you on the... I well, I'm more or less told not to touch on certain points. Well, that's censorship by any uh, newsman's definition. Uh, this is told you then by the uh, Voice of America officials. Yes. Uh, have you any reason to believe that the man who tells you this is doing it on his own or uh, is doing it uh, on orders, let's say, from Washington? I couldn't answer you that. I have no idea. What would you guess? But uh, it's the general atmosphere is what has no more mentioned. And what I'd like to say here, it isn't a question that we want to talk as a royalty or as a member of the um, old ruling class, but I have friends there. I grew up with them. Uh, they are all the organizations I was a part of. I really lived with them. I nursed so many of them. I have so many friends amongst the wounded, amongst the sick people that I cared for. It matters as what I was, and not only that, but the feeling that they have, that those of us over here, we have sort of sat back and, and are living an easy life whilst they are suffering, you see. They don't know enough of the battle that we are fighting for them. For instance, my speaking to you today, I welcome it because it's an occasion for me to speak for Romania. Well, now, uh, but it would encourage them to know that I do go around America talking about Romania all the time. Tell me uh, what specifically uh, the Voice of America officialdom directs you not to speak about on the Voice of America. Well, first of all, they now no more ask me to speak at all. Well, no, I guess that's about as fine a censorship <laughs> as you can about, have. When you, were, <laughs> when you were speaking, specifically what... Uh, did they, did they direct you not Well, keep it as general as possible. This is their direction yes, to you? Yes, yes. Well, now, this of itself isn't censorship. Uh, did they... Did they no, think? no, I can't say that they've ever censored anything that I have said, you know. Well, it certainly But I've been like also wise uh, in uh, saying, and besides, there are certain... I don't think that I am particularly important enough or do I understand enough about politics to allow myself to talk in that direction. Well, if you were on the Voice of America, I assume that your whole motivation in being there would be to help Rom Romanian freedom. Yes. I would assume that if the Voice of America spent any of its time and energy beaming broadcast to Romania, its whole motivation would be to help free Romania. Well, that's what I, you would think, but you see, the policy making of it is this, uh, do they want uh, anybody whose voice uh, represents a thing as definite as the kingdom when to you speak. Have, when well, you have and appeared. I don't think they do. Aren't that, they, I think, is fundamentally at the bottom of it. In your opinion, aren't, isn't that putting the cart before the horse? Uh, this place will have to be free before it can decide will well, it be a kingdom, it. will it be a representative government, or what? But we still represent abroad, at least to our understanding, that free Romania. Who else represents it abroad? Well, there is a uh, sort of a committee which represents it politically and uh, which is part of the, um, what do you call it, the Association of Captive Nations. Do they appear on Voice of America? Oh, I think they do, yes. Right. But they are also pretty, you know, it's pretty limited what they can do. Who speaks for Romania within Romania? What about the clergy? Well, that is, of course, a very difficult problem because... Uh, even when I was there, uh, the clergy cannot speak for freedom or anything like that. They very often get their sermons written and offered to them to read. And they have to read it. If they don't read it, the church is closed. And that priest, under some circumstances or other, gets gone into prison. You know, they always will find something if they want to. The laws are so all-inclusive for getting people into prison. You see, from the last letter, which I got just from somebody from the YWCA, she writes, every third family that you have known has someone in prison today. 
Are they permitted to, to attend church? The churches yes, they are can't open. close the churches. That they have not been able to do. And the churches are fuller than ever before. And they say a lot of intellectuals and so on are going much more to church, going into the clergy and uh, going even into convents and monasteries. What are the major religious groups in Romania? Well, we are really solidly Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox. Recently. And then are the Uniat, which uh, have recognized Rome. And there are Protestants, which I should say would be divided between the Lutheran population, which is, though not of Romanian origin, a certain amount of Baptists, and of course the Jewish population. Has not the Jewish population been permitted to emigrate? Theoretically. But for instance, a Jewish doctor whom I knew very well uh, before coming here, who was at the head of all the prophylaxis against tuberculosis, uh, he only got out quite lately, and he is now in America. But it took him years to get out. And ha are the hierarchy free to speak? No. Mm -hmm. Quite clearly, no. Forgive me if I uh, pester this Voice of America thing too long. Uh, you're not on it now. Oh, I haven't been on it for years. When you were on it, was there any specific subject they told you or asked you not to talk about? No. I must honestly say no. So that uh, the, censor the censorship then, if there has been any, uh, has been uh, uh, of a silken veil kind rather than yes, a... Uh, uh, more formal censorship that uh, exists in Romania or behind the Iron Well, curtain. naturally, I mean, that uh, here I think that, uh, of course, I've never heard what of what I said was transmitted, no, because it's always type, uh, taped. Yes. I you have spoken sure on Free Europe. You, you weren't sure whether it was broadcast or not. That I cannot tell. Uh, when I spoke last, it was in, from London, I made a tape for Free Europe, though, mm. and they certainly sent it. But I was very careful to emphasize what can one say. You know, it's very difficult. Well, your, your criticism, then, is a criticism of policy, that we yes. have not established a policy. That's what I think. What should our policy be, in your opinion? <laughs> well, that, I suppose, as a foreigner and someone who's received well, much any... kindness from you, it's rather difficult for me to answer, but I will. I think it means a firmer policy. What I mean is this. If you tell them how wonderful it is here and how bad it is to be under communists, I mean, putting it in very simple language, and you discuss the whole problem of their resisting it and going against it, and yet you receive the people who are murdering them, what do you want them to think? Isn't this then... You are free. You don't have to. I'm you see, that's the thing. It is so easy to criticize the one who is obliged when you are free. But you do things which you criticize them for doing. Well, how could we, how could we alter the policy to convey to them our belief in their freedom? Well, for instance, I would say, as a Romanian speaking, uh, that if I would say, all right, we are all ready for a coexistence, but let's begin by removing the Iron Curtain. We will talk about disarmament when you remove the threat, which is the Iron Curtain, after all, which physically exists. I've seen it. Well, is it possible for the Soviet Union to release politically any of the satellites without having their whole empire tumble down around them? Is this not a reality of political life? That may be a reality, but surely it's one to our advantage. Why are we so afraid of them then? Well, I'm, I'm thinking of it in terms of how do we convey this need to accept certain realities while at the same time retaining certain ideals. How do we do this? Well, I think you've got sometimes to make a choice between freedom and peace, and which you want to sell for which, or how much you want to pay for whichever you have chosen. Do you believe our choice in Hungary was wrong? Yes. What other choices were available? Well, I think there was a moment when there was a legitimate government, a short one, but a legitimate government which asked you in. Should we have put troops in there? Yes. I think the whole thing would have blown up like that. 
Uh, well... And I think that chance has now for many years gone. Isn't that a United Nations problem? Yes, but till they get to move up and do something. No, you can't really indict the United Nations so, that seriously. It didn't no. take the United Nations long to get into Korea. Uh, the United Nations, under our leadership, uh, made a very uh, strategic uh, decision not to go north of the Yalu River, which you can call right or wrong. Personally, I think it was wrong. So do I. But the understanding, the reasoning behind it is well understood. Now, it seems to me we had the same situation then. You say we should have uh, put troops into Hungary. Uh, I think that then everybody would have risen. But now, you see, they've lost their faith. You understand? Lost That's the, the tragedy of it. I'm not accusing anybody, and I don't say you could have done otherwise. I only think that we should face facts. Well, have we now destroyed their will to resist to the point that it is perhaps gone irrevocably? No. That I'm convinced you cannot destroy. You believe this will exist forever? I think that will resist forever because that's in the people themselves. That could never, I mean, if America disappeared, let's say, something terrible happened, America was no more, they would still be fighting for their freedom. I mean, that doesn't depend upon you. That's Are their feeling. Is there anything resembling an underground inside the country? The whole country is an underground. It is not organized, is it? I can't answer. I don't know. I wouldn't want to know. Does it have much prospect of being effectively organized? No, I think that under communism it's almost impossible. I would think the repression would be The repression severe... is too great, and I don't think they can, but I think that you have the whole country against them. That is clear. And an organization is at this point useless. What could they do with it? With the present no thaw, with the present thaw in relations between the U.S. and the Soviet Union, there is an increasing amount of travel available to Americans within the Soviet Union. Is this travel available also into Romania? Yes, on, on, on theory it is. For instance, many Americans of Romanian descent do go every summer to Romania, but they have to spend 10 days of it doing what the government wants them to do. And then only may they go and see their families. Are Romanians free to make trips outside the country? No. Is anyone free to do this? No, unless it's with very special permission and it takes years to get it. And they usually allow only old people over 70 or very sick ones to come out. And sometimes parents are allowed to visit their children, but there's always a hostage kept there. And Americans aren't permitted to just visit there as visitors, no. because we tried to get a visa there this summer. No, it's impossible. In other words, you'd have to have uh, relatives or somebody in mm -hmm. Romania and some concrete reason. But for even going. then, it doesn't mean they would give you a visa. Uh. Well, why is there this need to protect in I'm a sorry satellite to interrupt. and there is not in the Soviet I'm Union? I'm sorry to interrupt, Mr. Higgins and Princess, but our time is just about up. Our thanks to Princess Ileana of Romania for having been our guest and to the members of the press. Focus on World Affairs will return to Channel 11 next Sunday at 1.30 p.m. when another prominent figure in World Affairs will face the questions of the newsman. Thanks for having been with us and good afternoon. This has been Focus on World Affairs, the program which brings to WIIC's cameras the men who make the world news to be interviewed by the men who write the news you read. Next week, WIIC's cameras will focus on His Excellency Dato Camille, Ambassador of Malaya.